Touchdown confirmed. We're safe on Mars. Overnight, it landed successfully on Mars, a very elaborate mission. That, that came off successfully, and if you were up late, you got to you got to hear NASA celebrating. Good morning, welcome to the News Hub. I'm Rolf Winkler, and joining us right away, we have Richard Rainin, the Curiosity rover mechanical team manager out in Pasadena. Richard, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. It's been uh, quite a night for us. Have, have you slept at all? First of all, congratulations. <laughs> no, I haven't. In fact, I was thinking this probably is a lot like the Academy Awards. No sleep at all. Uh, it's been one constant celebration the entire evening. It's been fantastic. That's great. Now, now, of course, for folks that hadn't been paying attention, this was a very elaborate, very complex maneuver to get the Curiosity rover safely to the surface of Mars. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it is. We're putting a vehicle on the surface of Mars this time that is huge compared to the previous vehicles. This vehicle is the size of a small car. And in order to get a vehicle that size down to the surface of, of Mars, we couldn't rely on the previous technology that used airbags. We came up with a, a uh, powered descent vehicle that essentially flew the rover and landed it very gently on its wheels, uh, right in the center of the landing ellipse that we had predicted where it was going to land. So it was a picture-perfect landing by all indications and the rover is uh, is ready to go about doing its business. Great. Can I ask, by the way, right behind you, is that a model of the of the rover? Yeah, that's a, it's a full-scale replica of the rover that you see behind me. Um, that's what's sitting on the surface of Mars right now, a vehicle that looks just, uh, just like that. Great. So tell us about the, the Gale Crater, where you landed the Curiosity rover. It's a, it's a significant spot scientifically. How come? Oh, it's, it's huge scientifically, um, and the scientists are just so excited about it. It, it, uh, it will present to them the history of Mars geologically. It, it, it Effectively, where we have landed is a Grand Canyon kind of situation. We landed, we landed inside of a crater, but in the middle of that crater is this giant mountain that is about the size of Mount, uh, Mount Whitney here in the United States. So it's, it, we landed in this basin that is a crater that's about the size of, of the greater Los Angeles area. And then within that is this large mountain that has all these different layers that we're going to go up and explore, much like the Grand Canyon, and, and go back in time. Actually, we start out back in time and move up in time, looking at all the various layers uh, of, of the geology of, of Mars. It's it's quite an incredible place that we've landed. Indeed, indeed. By the way, we have, of course, already some shots have come back here on screen for folks. These are actual photos that have come back from the rover of the surface of Mars, uh, which you know, black and white photos. And, and this is just to start, of course. Explain, Richard, some of the goals. Of course, like you mentioned, NASA has been to Mars before. Why is this mission so special? Yeah, first let me say that these photos are just going to whet your appetite. The, the really great photos are going to come in the next few days. Um, this mission is different from the previous missions because we're carrying with us a complete analytical laboratory. Something like this has never been sent to the surface of Mars. What we intend to do with that analytical laboratory is look for primarily carbon-containing compounds. The scientists believe that with with an energy source like the sun, with an aqueous media, and we're pretty sure that there was water on the surface of Mars. And if we are able to detect organic compounds with this analytical laboratory, we will have what they feel are the building blocks for life uh, on the surface of Mars. So that's why it's so exciting. It's the first time uh, instruments of this nature have ever been sent to the surface of Mars. Mm -hmm. We're going to be taking soil samples here probably in the next couple of weeks. And we may be drilling into, uh, into rocks sometime in the next month or two and uh, taking a look at those with these analytical instruments. Will NASA also be trying to determine really the feasibility of a manned mission to Mars? That's a part of, of what we're doing here. We've got an instrument uh, or two on here that are, is going to be looking at the radiation environment on Mars, which is important um, if we ever send a, a human to the surface of Mars. The technology that we just demonstrated uh, to fly ourselves down uh, in all likelihood could be scaled up to the size of a vehicle that would uh, contain astronauts uh, to, to the surface of Mars. So yes, this, this very likely could be a precursor to the surface of Mars. I should, tell, I, I should tell our viewers that there really was a fantastic animation 
that really showed the entry procedure, the supersonic parachute involved, and then, and then the separation of the rover vehicle itself and how it, the, the, the jet rockets that slowed it to the surface. That was, that really, really was stunning, at least in the animation, I suspect. Was that really true to exactly how it, how it planned, how it played out? Were there any challenges it, along the way? Oh, it, it, it looks like it played out exactly like it did in that animation. Um, the, the challenges came in designing that system to work as, as reliably as it, it looks like it had. Um, it, we'd fly, first, we fly ourselves through the atmosphere by firing jets while we're tucked inside of our nice, uh, nice cool cocoon that keeps us shielded from the 3,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures on the outside. And then we deploy that parachute you just spoke of. It's the largest parachute we've ever deployed at the surface of Mars, scaling up from what we did on, on our past mission on MER. And then because that doesn't slow us down enough to land, we then drop ourselves out of the back shell, which is attached to that parachute, and essentially fly ourselves down to the surface of Mars. And it looks like we gently touch down at about 0.6 meters per second in vertical velocity, which is, uh, which is just perfect, just where we wanted to be. It matched our, our testing almost exactly. That's, that's, that's fantastic. I, I mean, I, I got to say, I'm geeking out watching all this. I, I, I really am. I, so remind us again, the, the next steps here, what, what people can really expect in the next few days and weeks of the mission. Well, so we're going to be getting some fantastic pictures back. Um, I've seen a couple of previews of, of some of them already um, that I think we'll be seeing today. Um, and they're just incredible, and the pictures should be just getting better and better. Um, we're going to be spending the next few days doing health checks of the vehicle, making sure the electronics are, are OK. We're, we fired all of our pyros after we landed that we needed to last night. We got confirmation of that. We'll be deploying. Uh, some of the uh, pieces of hardware that were locked out for launch and for landing. Um, so those deployments will occur today and tomorrow. We'll deploy the, uh, the high gain antenna and the remote sensing mass that contains a whole suite of cameras and a, a laser instrument that will actually allow us to shoot rocks at about uh, 20 feet away and quickly characterize the rocks for the scientists to see if there's anything there that they want to go look at. How, how many years has this been in the works, this mission? <laughs> uh, over eight years. I've been on it eight years myself. I think it actually started in the formulation phase about 10 years ago. But this is the culmination for me of eight solid years of work. And it's, it's uh, quite thrilling to actually see your hardware on the surface of Mars after spending that long on it. Well, congratulations. Uh, we, we have loved seeing the photos already that have come back. It was a great celebration overnight. It was, there was just so much energy. It was, it was really great to kind of, as an American, just to be a part of that. Yeah, it, it was great to be a part of it out here as well. My voice is a little hoarse from all the screaming and yelling that we did. It was quite the celebration. I was out at Caltech with about 3,000 other engineers and scientists and technicians that helped build the vehicle and, and get it to the surface. And great. We couldn't be happier. Well, Richard, thank you so much for getting up so early on the West Coast to, to or I should say, staying up late on the West Coast to join <laughs> us today. We really appreciate it, and congratulations. Thank you for having me.